Hi, welcome back to my series on assembling the RC2014 Pro. Um, in the previous videos, I've been assembling these modules. Um, so we have ROM module, RAM, Z80, compact flash, uh, serial I.O. and the clock module. Uh, it's the last board to assemble now, which is a biggie. It's the backplane that connects all of these together. And you see in front of me all of the components that I've got left. So there's um, a load of decoupling capacitors, a couple of resistors, jumpers, switches, connectors, and rubber feet that have been thoughtfully provided. And a load of these headers, which will need soldering on. Now, although the uh, RC2014 board appears to have um, positions for enhanced bus all of the way along, we're only going to be putting enhanced bus sockets from slot 5 through to slot 9. So they will have a single 40 pin header like so, soldered in place. He said, I'm trying to get it in the hole. Let's try that. Let's see what I'm doing. There we go. That's slot five. And I will have a single one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty pin header inserted alongside it, starting at the ground pin. Like so, there we go. This leaves four pins at the bottom unpopulated. Um, so slots one, two, three, four, uh, and ten through to twelve will just have a single um, header in place, like so. I assume in future I need to look at the documentation. One can simply solder another um, shorter header alongside those to make those enhanced bus as well. But that's what's provided in the kit and that's what's required to get this up and running. Five enhanced slots and um, one standard slot for the compact flash. Um, yeah, so there's going to be a lot of soldering here. I'm not going to film all of it. I'll probably film the beginning and the end. So you can get an idea of how I'm approaching this. And uh, yeah, there is a guide on the internet on the RC2014 website, which suggests holding these in place by using um, header pins um, going across like so in order to level everything up. But there's another comment in that thread near the bottom, which suggests that the alignment's not quite right. So they're not going to be quite vertical because um, these are not at 2.54 pin spacing. They're almost, but no cigar. Uh, so what I'm going to do is pretty much what I do with anything like this. I'll tack in the top and the bottom. I'll hold it in place so that it's vertical. You can feel it on the vertical because these um, headers have got a flat base. Um, and then just a reflow of the connections at the top and the bottom. And once I'm satisfied visually and by feel that it's level, um, I'll solder the rest of the pins in. But to start off with, I'll just tack all of the connectors in um, so that um, when I come to solder, I can just flip it over and do all of the connections in one go, one mammoth soldering session. So uh, and I'll start off with uh, slot five. Uh, just double check that is the first enhanced slot. Let me just check the documentation. Yep, yeah, so that's right. Uh, slot 5 is the first enhanced. Um, that's one with soldering iron up. Switch that on. Find my magnifying spectacles. Uh, these are excellent by the way. I don't know if I've shown you these before. So. Uh, Magnifying specs. Um, I wear them with a headband, although they do come with arms as well, like spectacles. But um, the headband suits me better because 
I wear hearing aids. So it's one less thing around my ears. I've got enough around there at the moment as it is. Uh, so soldering iron's warmed up, which is good. Get the right lens, the one that works for me. Pop it in here. You take a battery as well, so that you can light things up, which is quite handy. Um, yeah, I used to be able to solder things that aren't by eye without wearing any aids. Um, I think five years ago I realised I needed a magnifying glass. And I ended up using my helping hands magnifying glass here, which is okay, but you know, if you're soldering a big board or you're moving around a larger board like this, it does come a bit cumbersome. All right, pop those on, see what I'm doing. Let's just take the short one off for the moment. And uh, let's start soldering. Right. Um, let's flick it over first. Hold it in place. It doesn't have to be terribly straight at this particular point in time. Um, like I said, when you hold it, you can feel it's level because of the flat base. You know, if it's to one side, it, you can rock it into the flat position quite easily, if you know what I mean. Um, there's definitely no ambiguity about it when it's in the right place. So, double check I've got it in the right slot. So the slot markings are at the bottom. That's slot one. That's slot five. Yeah, let's do it. Oh, flip you over. That feels level anyway. There we go. Right. Hopefully I've got enough solder for all this. Dee -dee -dee. Clean the soldering iron. Tin. And solder away. So let's do... Top and bottom pins. Melt to temperature first. Bit of solder on there. Just conduct the heat a bit better. One down. Four billion to go. It'll be fine. It's all part of the fun of it, this. Two down. There we go. So let's just do a quick visual on that. So the way I'll do that is I'll hold that with a couple of fingers. I mean, it looks straight-ish. And then I can just rock it in place. There we go. Bobby does look at that. 90 degrees on the nose. Well, I don't know, I've not measured it, but it looks like way. So the million dollar test, the acid test is, if I get the shorter one now and do the same, is it buttered up right against it? Uh, that was my watch pinging, son asking for money. Give me money. There we go. And that, that's pretty good actually, I think. Uh, seems to have a plastic lump on it. There you go, that one's fitting a bit of flush. That is pretty neat. Yep. Again, just make sure it's it feels like it's square with a board. Flick it upside down. Oh, make sure that... Oh, I've lost it already. Make sure that you're not populating it from ground down and you're leaving the bottom four pins empty there. So I'm treating the top of the board where all the power connectors are. So it's the first enhanced pin is ground, then five volts and refresh. Make sure you're doing it from there. There we go. Right, do the same again. Tack it in. Uh, 
Where, where are the pins? <laughs> uh, okay, yeah. There they are. One. Look it around. I've got too much salt on my iron now. Way too much. There we go. Just want a dob on the end just to conduct heat. And it's the fourth pin. It's one, two, three, four. And there. There we go. So that's tacked in as well. Let's just level that one up. Feels a bit off kilt now. What is going on? That's it. And the bat one. Again. Yeah, I think that's. I think that's pretty straight. I guess one way of checking how straight it is is to get something with a 90 degree angle. Like, say for example, another header. And just put it alongside it like that. As you can see, that's pretty straight. That's a 90 degrees. That one's leaning in a bit. It's only ever so fractionally. Oh, you can spend hours fiddling around getting everything down to the next micron. Um, really can. Right. Good, good, good. We can do a test fit now. So let's pick one of my cards of a Enhanced bus. Uh, pick one with less pins. There you go. So let's fit that in. I believe they go in like so. Ooh, moment of truth. No, don't have to push it in all the way, do I? Uh, yeah. Yeah, I'm happy with that. I'm happy with that. That will do. That will do, pig. That will do. Okay. Right, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to stop the video. I'm going to tap the rest of these in and um, I'll see you at the other end. So uh, I'll see you in about, I don't know, 30 minutes my time. A couple of seconds your time by magic. Just before um, I get around to soldering the rest of them, um, I've just noticed it's actually easier if you do, say, for example, a couple spaced a distance apart. Because when you flick it over, you've then got a square surface. So it kind of levels the headers automatically for you because, you know, you can just 
they'll square up themselves. Um, the board's not janky, it's already at a 90 degree angle, or it should be anyway. So, yeah, back to soldering. Whoa. I've just tacked them all in now for the moment, but I've just loosely test fitted the cards and I think they look okay. Straight stuff for my purposes. Um, yep. I'm not going to worry too much about that. I think one can obsess about the details too much sometimes. Um, yeah, happy with that. Uh, one more advantage of tacking them in, by the way, is because you've only tacked in the top and bottom, there's a little bit more leeway to just give them a little bit of an adjust before you do the final soldering. So if it's slightly off, you don't even need to apply any heat, just gently bend it into the right position. I mean, you know, it's nobody's looking for, you know, military precision here, but you want the boards to stand up right, don't you, at least. Um, yeah. I have seen spaces, actually, I don't know where I've seen them, where people, there are holes in the board here. All of the boards have it. And people are using spacers to hold all of the core boards together, which seems like an eminently sensible idea. Um, but frankly, when those header pins are engaged with these headers, I don't think they're going anywhere. It's not going to suffer from ramp at wobble, well, that's for sure. Right, more soldering to do. Um, I think I'll do these now, and then I'll come back to the bag of sundries. Um, I think this is mostly connectors and switches, decoupling capacitors for each one of these um, headers, resistor, that's about it really I think. Oh, there's two capacitors there, assume they're optional. Who knows, we'll find out. I will see you um, once I've soldered all of this up, back in about half an hour my time. Maybe a couple of seconds of your time. Whoa. Okay, we're back. Um, yeah, I've soldered all of the connections now. So if you look at the bottom, that's all neatly soldered, not just tacked in place. Um, funnily enough, it did take me about half an hour. Um, there'll be a link somewhere, either in the description or in the video. Uh, for a bit of bonus video of me soldering the connections against the clock. Um, so feel free to pop off and watch that at some point. Next, discretes. There really isn't an awful lot left to solder now. Um, there's a handful of decoupling capacitors that I need to put in, so I'll probably do those next. And it's mainly connections. I think there's a couple of resistors and LED, and that's about it. So let's get to it. I start off with these um, 100 nanofarad decoupling capacitors. Let's get those out first. There we go. Right. Oh, you will come out. There we go. Brilliant, brilliant. So, yeah, there's just two resistors left in there. You can see them still with their tape up top and bottom. Yeah, there was a reset button in there and a switch. Yeah, pretty cool. Right, I was given a tip by, I think it was um, Spencer, who's the guy behind the RC2014. I was struggling getting the tape off these capacitors, and it's something to do with resistors, and it just, you know, didn't click. I was being a bit slow. He said, just trim them like that. There'll be enough lead left on in order for you to uh, solder, and uh, it'll be a lot quicker. So, yeah, look at that. There we go. Let's try one. Just make sure that the system works. Um, I've got uh, 12 of these uh, to solder in and 12 connections. Okay, this is a bit fiddly now because there's less lead. I can use my Needle nose pliers just to get them in. Oi! Oi! 
Let's try that again without the butterfingers. Use my needle nose pliers just to lower them in place gently. Okay, you will go in. There we go. So that's one in. Um, I'm leaving the label facing me, the 104, so I know what the value of the capacitor is. I'm just keeping my thumb on that. Bender leads over slightly. Job's a good one. There we go. So I've got uh, 11 more of those to do now. I'll get cracking. I'll probably just fast forward this segment. Um, there's no need for me to record all of it. I'll see you at the other side of this fast forward. Okay, that was certainly a lot easier than struggling with the tape anyway, um, although with hindsight it might have been easier to insert the components before I put the headers in, um, because it was just a bit fiddly pushing them into the holes, not much more. Um, yep, just need to solder these up now. Uh, yes, so I've got 12 to solder, soldering irons up to temperature. Let's do it. Where's my solder gun? Yikes. There we go. Just tin and clean my soldering iron. It's not being used. I'm actually soldering this a couple of days after I did the uh, headers. I didn't get a chance to do any soldering yesterday. Right, what's the best way to do this then? I think it's probably like that. Solder across. One. Two. Three. Four. You'd have thought by now a man of my age would have learnt to have count in his head, but sadly not. I count out loud. It helps you just keep track of things. There we go. Lost count already. Mm. One side done. Yeah, that's looking pretty dinky still. Let's get the other side done. Right, sure. I'm really going through the solder here. I have to get them all at some point. Yeah, just to reiterate, it's. Uh, 16, I think it's 60, 40 or 60, 63, 37, it's a lead solder. Um, I've got a reel of unleaded solder somewhere. I used to uh, oh, go on. assemble and fix boards that were had to be ROHS compliant. So they had to be lead free. I didn't really find it the best solder to work with. Um, not with a bog standard soldering iron anyway. It didn't seem to produce a satisfactory joint. You know, it was just, you had to think, I think I found I had to run the soldering iron hotter. It was slower to solder. You just couldn't quite get into the flow of it. And the, 
the solder joint it just didn't look as nice I mean you know they did the job but there we go always do stuff like this in a well ventilated room um, I think another important thing to note with leaded solder it's probably advisable if you've been handling it to wash your hands once you've done afterwards that's what I usually do um, I don't know whether there's any medical reason for it but you know lead's a bit toxic isn't it right let's trim these leads one I've really enjoyed doing this kit. It's uh, it's quite nice being able to break it up in modules. And uh, like I said it before, I'll say it again. I think if I was going to design a Z80 based computer, in fact, any 8-bit based computer, I'd probably adopt the RC2014 idea. I mean, it's technically not an original idea having a backplane, but I think the way that this has been packaged, it's uh, it's rather tasty. Now in a bus running, between modules, oh, I've got a splinter there, yowzers, there you go. Yes, that's the disadvantage of doing this, it's a bit fiddly, holding on to the Leads to trim them. There we go. There. Oh, missed one. Me and my eyesight. There we go. That will. Oh, have I started bleeding on the board? That's no good, is it? Mm. <laughs> oh, the gore. If you don't like blood, look away now. No. I'll wipe that off later. In fact, let me just go and get something to wipe that with now. Oh, back again. Just wipe my blood off there. Literally made with my own blood, sweat, and tears. I'm not bleeding anymore, which is a good thing. Good, good, good. Right, where was I up to before I suffered that mortal injury? Resistors. Uh, two resistors, a 330R and a 2K2. Right, <clears throat> I've only got two resistors left, so 2K2 is all the reds. So that's that fella there. What was the other one? 330 ohms is orange, orange, brown. That's that fella there. Excellent. Good, good, good. So let's get these soldered in then now. Those pliers are a bit wonky. I could do we get some new ones at some point? What have I done to these? Hmm. I've 
had them a few years. They owe me nothing. They're not meeting in the middle. Right, so what's this? That's the 2K2. Uh, let's get you in over there. Perfect. What was the other one? 330. There we go. And let's get these aligned. I'm still bleeding. Where am I bleeding from? Oh, yeah. Oh, it's all happening. Uh, I'm going to have the gold bands on the right hand side. There's no reason for this other than the fact that it just looks neater. It affects my OCD less. Not that I've got a lot of OCD, but you know, I like things to be tidy. Okay, so that's the resistors done. Let's get them soldered in. Job, as they say, is a good one. Let's get these tr leads trimmed. I love the end of a project. You're just kind of running out of components to solder. Uh, okay, what have we got left in the bag? Component-wise, I think... A switch. Oh, a button. A jumper which has just escaped. Jack socket. Terminal block. Rubber feet. A header. LED I'm not sure whether we'll need those and just a bag full of jumpers left now we'll just retrieve this one that f jumped onto the floor okay it wasn't a jumper that jumped onto the floor it was the button don't want to lose that although I've got spares let's just put these in the bag spare later let me do the configuration. Excuse the squeaky chair. Right. Uh, what's next then? Let's do the LED. So, uh, anode is the long one, which is plus. Where does this go? That goes here, like so. So, it's clearly marked with a plus on the board. So the long lead goes in there. Long lead plus. It took me ages to remember stuff like that when I first started out of electronics, which is the anode and which is the cathode. Um, ended up writing a load of post-its. Um, yeah. Top tip, post-its, write notes, familiarity will follow. Right, let's get this soldered in then. Yep. Let's 
This is just a power LED, so... Just say just a power LED. It is the power LED. Let's just make sure that's flush to the board. There we go. What's wrong with you? There we go, got there in the end. Right. Good thing about PCBs is that the solder has a tendency, if it's good solder and there's enough flux, to flow where the metal is. As long as everything's nice and clean. So if you get a bridge, say, for example, if you oh no, I've bridged it, the temptation is to immediately reach for the solder wick or your desolder gun. Actually, I find sometimes it's sufficient just to reflow the connection and then the solder will just kind of flow over the joints, over where the metal is, where the, you know, around the holes. What's the word for them? I don't know. Right, okay, so that's the LED in. We've got a reset switch to do now. Let's do some switches. Uh, right, switches are usually longer than they are. They're wide, aren't they? They're not square, they're rectangular. So hopefully that will just... Mm -mm -mm, needs bending a little bit. Yep. That will just fit in there, like so. I have heard on some projects, you know, like the uh, Mini Pet, that you don't actually need to solder these in. They're just kind of gripped. If you're in a keyboard with like 40 of these in, you know, you're like, oh, God, I've got to solder every single one of them. No way. Actually, you don't. They make contact just by pushing them in the holding place by the claws. There you go. Top tip. Not my tip, but it's a top one. But I am going to solder this in anyway, because it's just the one. I'm sure I can manage that. There we go. switches so 80s 70s even uh, it's actually got a slightly bent pin as well let's push that back in place there we go good old throw switch uh, let's solder that in next oh no there's another bent pin it's all must have got squashed during shipping there we go. Not a biggie. Not a biggie. Mm -mm -mm. I assume that goes in here. I'm not really reading the instructions at this point. I think it's fairly obvious where everything goes. Right, this will need soldering in. Lots of solder. I've got precisely 15 minutes for my lunch break ends. I'm doing this for my lunch break at the moment, so hopefully I'll be able to finish this. I won't be able to test it, but I'll get everything soldered up. Uh, just solder on this one. Make sure it's flush, do the usual. Opposite corners and then solder the rest in. Mm. 
There we go. Good, good, good. What next? Uh, power. We have the power. Right, this goes uh, like so, I guess. There's only one way it will go. Okay, this is a bit of a looser fit. So I'm going to use my helping hand. And by helping hand, I mean blue tack, just to kind of hold it in place whilst I flip it upside down and solder it. There you go, put that on the left hand side. I just, I'm just going to solder one in. Now just make sure it's level first. So I tack it in. Not put an awful lot of solder on to start off, just tack it in. Uh, yeah. I'll do. Then I can get it positioned and all that jazz. Make sure it's flush with the board. There we go. Excellent. Right, let's get the rest of that soldered in. Bending them. No, I'll be fine. There we go, that'll do, that will do. Don't need to bend them, makes it a bit easier to remove in case there's any problems with that in the future. Um, what's next then? Uh, this fella. Uh, I guess it probably makes sense to have the terminals facing that way rather than into the board. Yes, that makes sense, doesn't it? I'm all for making sense. So let's just use my helping hand just to hold that in place while I flip it upside down. Just tack it in so I can get it level. That's pretty darn good. Yep. Again, don't spare the solder on that. It's probably going to get a bit of a hammering, isn't it? Uh, is that done? Oh my, we're almost finished. I think that goes here. Augs output. Do the helping hand thing again. Ye gods. 
It's nearly done. <sighs> Try that again with a clean soldering tip. Hmm. Yeah, not playing ball today. What's going on here? Might be a bit of grease on that. Uh, it's level. And that's all of the components done. I think there's one more thing that needs to be done. Um, a jumper goes on here. Let me just check the instructions. This is where I will check the instructions. Um, I think it's just a case of putting a jumper across the 5 volt direct, looking at the instructions. Uh, that's for a regulator who use 9 volts or higher. Good old LM7805. Um, presume these capacitors are required if you're using uh, LLM7805. Filtering. Uh, okay, I'm going to be running this off 5 volts initially, so I'll get that jumpered. Yeah, I've not got a right angle, which it suggests in the destructions, but I do have one of those, which I think will be sufficient. And it's not going to get in the way of anything, is it? Let's just test fit it. If we put that in there, and if I put a board in here. That's not getting in the way, is it? Okay. Let me do what I've got. Oy. Glue that in place with the blue tack. Get upside down. Uh, soldering iron. Yikes. And let's get this soldered in. Very thoughtful that there are options for running off um, a power supply. I might do that at some point. I've not got a regulator in my box at the moment. I used my last one on a computer refurb. Right. Hallelujah. Let me put my soldering iron away. Good tin in the stand. Turn it off. Job, as they say, is a good one. We now have a completed backplane and five modules to insert in said backplane. So the next phase will be testing, which is going to be interesting. Um, the way I'm probably going to approach this is I'm going to test the bat plane on its own first. Just double check I've not got any shorts first by popping it over and just running over these with a multimeter to make sure that adjacent pins don't have shorts, especially around here, the enhanced bus to make sure that the pins on the um, adjoining headers aren't shorted out. I don't need to test everything for continuity because that would be ridiculous, but I can test adjacent pins 
again same with the capacitors as well where there are close connections i'll probably just double check i've not created any shorts here that solder's not flowed underneath the <coughs> power connector to short any of these out same for the switch um, power it up check that works off five volts double check that all of these are getting five volts and ground again i can do that with a multimeter you don't need any specialist tools for that and then once i've done that i will start testing things uh, in sequence the first thing i'll probably do is plug a clock module in get my oscilloscope out and check that the clock module's working that i'm getting a um a good solid clock signal on the um it should come out on the clock bus there on the bus sorry on the clock pin so just checking getting a clock and probably a clk2 that must be the second clock for the enhanced bus so you can check both of the clocks are working and then once I've checked, I've got a good clock signal, I can then go on to test the rest. Anyway, whew, I hope you've enjoyed watching this video. If you like what I'm doing, then please subscribe to my channel. Um, it's worth checking out the RC2014 website as well, if you think you want to have a crack at this. There's uh, a link in the description at the bottom. Um, again, I stress I'm not affiliated with Spencer or the RC2014 project in any way, shape or form. Um, I'm just doing this purely out of my own pocket and any enthusiasm I, ha enthusiasm I have for this project is my own. Uh, I think it's a lovely little kit to assemble. Um, yeah, so there's a link at the bottom if you want to build your own. Um, please, again, please subscribe to my channel and I'll see you in the next video when we'll get this thing powered up and see whether or not my hard work has paid off. I'll catch you around.